An addiction to distraction is the end of your creative production. Every single one of us is currently living in the attention economy. Whether we like it or not, we're all products in this machine that seeks to monetize and monopolize the space in our minds. And the companies that have done this, the companies that dominate our economy, have done so through manipulation of the very thing that makes us human, the very thing that brought us here in the first place. And that is the innate, insatiable desire for progress and to better our situation in life. And like it or not, the attention economy is here to stay. The players may come and go, but the desire of companies to profit off of our consumption of media is growing more and more every single day. And I would argue that this is why we as a society today are more distracted than we have ever been. So what have attention-driven companies done to make us so distracted and how have they done it? Well, to understand this, we first need to understand how the human brain is wired and what makes us want to do the things we do. Specifically, we need to understand the brain's reward system and the role of dopamine. Dopamine is a neurotransmitter, which is just a thing that your body produces to send messages to different parts of itself. And dopamine is the neurotransmitter that makes us feel good in pursuit of a particular goal. It's the brain's way of rewarding us when we do things that we feel are on the right path, such as eating, drinking, making money, or reproducing. It's the brain's way of saying, this thing was good, so let's go get more of it in the future. So dopamine is the motivating molecule. It's the thing that drives us to seek out more of the things that we perceive as beneficial. Now, why do we have dopamine in our brains in the first place? Well, it's because when we were primitive human beings, it was the thing that kept us alive by pushing us to do things that were crucial to our survival, such as seeking out food, water, shelter, and a mate. Nowadays, it's the reason why we want a better career, a bigger house, a nicer car, good food, all of the things that we pursue that make life better. Without it, we wouldn't be driven and motivated to do things to better our situation. And so dopamine has been the driving force behind the entire human narrative for as long as we've existed. So how have social media platforms and other attention-driven companies used dopamine to keep us distracted? Well, these companies have researched on a deeply scientific level the ways to trigger the release of dopamine and they've baked that research into their recommendation algorithms. To understand how this works, let's compare the social media algorithm to gambling at a casino. For example, I used to love playing blackjack, but what was it about blackjack that kept me coming back to the table for more even though I knew that I was probably going to lose money? Well, it was dopamine. When you get a blackjack in the game of blackjack, the feeling is intoxicating. When you get that ace and the dealer is going around and around the table dealing cards and he's getting closer and closer to you and the suspense is building and the anticipation is killing you until he finally gets to you and it hits. You got that 10. You've got the blackjack and the feeling is amazing. So what does dopamine do? It tells you to go again. It tells you that maybe, just maybe, that you could get another blackjack. And because that first one felt so good, dopamine is telling you that you need to go back for more. See, it's not the win that triggers dopamine. It's the possibility that you could get that feeling again. And so the game of blackjack capitalizes on our dopaminergic system through the use of intermittent rewards. You don't win all the time and you don't know when you're going to win. And so that feeling of suspense and anticipation is what keeps you coming back for more. And that is dopamine. Now, social media apps are designed the exact same way. They're designed to give you an initial reward through a really amazing video or an engaging post or something completely novel, but they don't give it to you all the time. And you'll see this if you observe when you're scrolling social media. For example, if I'm scrolling on YouTube Shorts, Right when I log into the YouTube app, I will most likely get served a video that is highly rated with a lot of likes and highly engaging from a creator that I've probably recently subscribed to, and that's to hook me onto the platform. After a while though, I'll start getting videos that have maybe a few hundred or less likes that maybe aren't as engaging, 
and I'll start to keep scrolling in search of another good video until I finally get a video that maybe has 1.5 million likes and it's something completely new from a creator that I've never seen before. And so this is the exact same thing as the casino. I got my initial reward when I logged onto the app via a highly engaging and entertaining video. Dopamine tells me that that feeling I got from the video was good and that I should try to go get it again. And as I'm scrolling through the less entertaining videos, the anticipation and the suspense is building and building until it feels like I'm in search of something to entertain me and I just have to find it until I finally get that engaging video and I get that quick hit of dopamine and I get that good feeling. And then the cycle repeats again, over and over and over. And this is how attention-driven companies keep you on their platform or how casinos keep you on the slot machine or at the blackjack table. They use intermittent rewards coupled with an extremely low barrier user interface to make it as easy as possible for you to continue your search for that satisfactory feeling that comes from another great video. If you notice, every single app now has the format where you can go from video to video to video without having to do anything else. Similar to the YouTube Up Next feature or the Netflix autoplay feature, they've eliminated any potential gap where you might be able to exit their platform. So what does all of this mean in terms of impact to your own life? Well, it means that attention-driven companies have decoupled the dopamine system in your brain with what it was originally meant to do, which was to move you forward in life. When you watch another entertaining video, Dopamine is telling your brain that that is a good feeling. And to your lizard brain, that good feeling is translated into something that is good for your life. That's why it feels good. But in reality, you haven't done anything that's good for your life. You've just watched another video. In fact, you've probably done something that's not good for your life because you've wasted your time on this video. So what this means for us today is that we are now living in a world where we can no longer trust our lizard brain feelings to motivate us towards things that are good for our lives. In fact, we have to be actively distrustful of our dopaminergic system because in today's society, we know that there are hundreds of companies and thousands of people and billions of dollars whose sole purpose is to capitalize on these systems. The good news is that we are human beings, which means we possess more than just a lizard brain. And so we are able to exercise control over our dopamine system using critical thinking and logic. So instead of being a slave to the lizard brain and being mind controlled by the companies that dominate our society, you have the ability to harness the power of those systems in your brain and use them for what they were meant to be used for. But in order to do this, you have to recognize the trickery that your brain has fallen for and you have to be able to dig yourself out of the dopamine hole that you found yourself in. How do you do this? Well, here are two practical ways that you can start taking back control of your mind. Number one is exercise routinely. This will greatly benefit your body, but it will also greatly benefit your mind in many ways. First, it will teach you discipline and the ability to do things you don't want to do when they don't feel good. And that is the exact opposite of what attention-driven companies want you to do. Next, it will teach you perseverance and how to keep going when things get difficult and you want to quit. I know we can all get better at this because when I'm doing something really difficult, like writing or working, a lot of times I'll immediately want to reach for my phone and go on YouTube or go on Facebook because I know that I can get that quick dopamine hit without the required effort. Finally, exercising routinely will start to gradually rewire your dopamine system and it will make you start to pursue difficult things with the knowledge that on the other side of those things lies an amazing feeling of accomplishment. And this is what dopamine was meant to do. It was meant to motivate you to do things that are good for your life and to feel good doing them. Number two is simply delete social media. You don't have to delete everything, but just delete one app and see how it goes. Delete your top used app for one day and see how you feel. I think we'll all find that we feel a little bit more uneasy about this than we care to admit. And that is a sign that we become addicted and that our baseline level of dopamine has been raised to a level that regular life simply cannot satisfy. And so by deleting the app, you're taking a step to reset that baseline level of dopamine and that will make regular life feel interesting and stimulating again. And that will make you pursue real life things that move your real life 
forward. I challenge everyone who made it this far in the video to try at least one of these things this week and see how you feel. Do you feel anxious, nervous, relieved, freed maybe? However you're feeling about this, comment below what you want to do to take back control of your mind and what scares you the most about it. For me, I'm going to try to go no YouTube shorts and see how that feels. For you, you may want to start an exercise routine or maybe delete TikTok. Whatever it is, I believe every single one of us possesses the ability to master our minds and take control of our future. Good luck in your journey and I will see you in the next one.